So today we're going to introduce the canonical ensemble. Uh, there are actually two ways to derive the canonical ensemble. Uh, we'll look at one way which uses the Boltzmann definition of entropy and later on we'll also use the Gibbs definition of entropy to define, uh, to derive the ensemble in another way. So let's consider uh, the following. I have a system S with energy ES and temperature T and it is surrounded by a heat reservoir R with energy ER and the same temperature T. Now our question is how do we define the thermodynamic quantities uh, for this system? Now clearly S is not a closed or isolated system. So no, it is closed, but it is not isolated. What that means is it can exchange energy with the reservoir, but it cannot exchange particles with it. And this is precisely the type of problem which uh, the canonical ensemble can deal with, that the microcanonical ensemble cannot. The microcanonical ensemble only deals with isolated systems, and this is not isolated. So, uh, our path will be to consider this. Let's say that the system S in, is in some microstate I with energy EI. Now, how many microstates of the total combined system are uh, coherent with, uh, with this? So let's say that the total system has energy E so E is equal to E S plus E R. Now, because a reservoir plus the system form a closed isolated system, right? There's, it doesn't make sense to say that heat is entering the reservoir from here or exiting. Uh, it, this can happen across the boundary of S, but not across the boundary of the reservoir. But uh, it doesn't really make sense. So what I can say is this total energy must be conserved. So it is a constant of uh, motion. Furthermore, because it, this is a reservoir, I also expect E S to be much smaller than the total energy. So these are the two assumptions that we'll make. Uh, so with this in mind, what are the number of total microstates of the total system, which uh, have energy E, where the system S is in the microstate I? Well, the system S is in one microstate, so this is really just the number of microstates that the reservoir can stay in, right? This system is in one microstate, so we just have to look at the number of microstates that the reservoir can occupy. Well, what is the energy of the reservoir? It's E minus EI, right? It was our first assumption right here. Okay, so this is the number of microstates uh, consistent with S being in the microstate I. But what if I don't tell you what microstate the system is in? What if I just want to know the number of microstates where the total energy is E? Well, in that case, I will simply have to sum over I. So sum over all the microstates that S can be in. So if S is in this microstate, how many microstates uh, of R are there, this many, and I sum over all the possible microstates I. So this will be equal to sum over I of omega R E minus E I. Okay, so this tells us the number of microstates of the combined system with energy E. Now, Remember, the Boltzmann definition of entropy is the following. So Boltzmann defined entropy as, I'll consider the entropy of the reservoir. So it is the Boltzmann constant times log of omega reservoir E minus ER. Now remember, the reservoir is much bigger than the system. Uh, so 
EI will be much smaller than E. So knowing this, we may as well just do a Taylor expansion about E. And if I do this, well, what do I find? Well, this is KB log of omega R E, right? M minus derivative with respect to E of KB log of omega R energy E times E I. Right? The negative sign came because here I'm doing E minus E I. But let's look at this for a second. This is none other than the entropy of the reservoir with energy E. Okay, this was the entropy of the reservoir with energy E minus E I. And remember how we define temperature. Temperature was defined as this. One over temperature is equal to the derivative of the entropy with respect to energy. So if you plug this here, I will get that this is equal to KB log of omega RE minus derivative of entropy of the reservoir with respect to E. So that is just one over the temperature of the reservoir, which we said is T times E I. Okay, and let's remember this is equal to this right here. So I can do some algebra, I'll leave it for you. And the end result is that the number of microstates of the reservoir uh, with energy E minus EI is equal to the number of microstates of the reservoir with energy E times an exponential factor minus EI over KBT. You can easily find this by raising this and this to the power of E and simplifying. Okay, now what is the total number of microstates? Well, we said the total number of microstates is just the sum over microstates of this quantity right here. So ER, uh, sorry, so number of microstates with energy E will be equal to this times the sum over microstates of this exponential factor. Now I will do this, I will define beta to be one over Boltzmann constant times temperature. This will help simplify a bit our calculations. Okay, so here we go. This is how I will write it from now on. Okay, we're nearly done. Now we just have to invoke one final postulate of statistical physics, and that is the equal a priori probability postulate, uh, which essentially says the microstates of a system with the same energy must be equally probable. So if I have a microstate I and microstate J and they both have energy EI, then PI, sorry, no, let's not call it PI, let's just call it P. Sorry, sorry let's not call it E, let's call, let's call it E, let's not call it EI then PI is equal to PJ. What this tells me is that the probability of finding, it, finding the system in the microset I must be proportional to the number of microstates of the total system where the subsystem in, this, in energy I so this must be proportional to the exponential of minus beta times EI. And now I just have to normalize. If I normalize this, 
I get exponential of minus beta EI over the sum of the exponential of minus beta EI of, uh, and the sum is over I. Now, usually we define the denominator here as something called the partition function. So we often write this as, um, note that this I and this I are not the same thing. Okay, uh, let's actually call this J. Okay, so exponential over Z. This Z is called the partition function. So Z is called the partition function and it is defined as the, the denominator. So exponential of minus beta EJ. Okay. This is a very important quantity as we'll see later on if we find the partition function, we fully solve the problem we're dealing with. All other thermodynamic quantities can be expressed in some way or another as a function of this. So if anything, this is the result that you want to be boxing and perhaps this as well.